The Chicago Bears draft stock improves while Ryan Pohl's draft class impresses versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's talk more on what our Bears have to look forward to starting now. Now, if you are new to the channel, hit that like button, subscribe to the page. If you've already subscribed, man, you already know what to do. And make sure you got that notification bell turned on because it's the only channel talking Chicago sports, how Chicago talk, man. So make sure that you get in tune with us. So here's the thing, right? Uh, Bears yesterday versus the Philadelphia Eagles come out and play pretty well, right? But that's not the game that after that everybody was as focused on right because the Denver Broncos go out and get a win versus the Arizona Cardinals who were missing Kyler Murray improving the Chicago Bears draft stock from the number three overall pick to the number two overall pick opening up a lot of options for the Bears right and right like just a a, a lot more I'll say this. It's a lot more exciting after seeing what we saw yesterday from the Bears rookie class, right? I mean, but just because you feel like Ryan Poles isn't going to just go out there and completely mess this up. But here's the thing. You have an assumption that Bryce Young is probably going to go to the Texans, although Lovey Smith... You, you never know, right? Like, he he could do anything. He, he, he's a guy that'll be like, no, actually, I like this DB. And you'd be like, oh, that doesn't really help you in the short run. You're 1-12. Figure that out. But... What it does here for the Chicago Bears is now their draft stock uh, is, is basically completely open, right? Like it opens you up to the possibility of actually taking a player that high, which could be Jalen Carter. Uh, it, and it just really depends on what you want to do. But I love the fact that the Bears have so many options coming into this season now. Like you're not looking at a team that right now is – or, um, you're not looking at a team that right now you feel like, oh my God, we have no hope going into next year with the current players that we have, and we have no hope going into next year with the draft capital that we have. The Bears have nothing but hope at literally every position right now, right? Even with where this team is right now and how they've played to this point. Again, we'll get into the rookie class and stuff like that, but just Jaylen, Justin Fields. Jalen Johnson, guys like that that have been here, how David Montgomery has played this year, right? You feel really good about, at a minimum, the base of guys, the core, right, the heart of these guys that's going to be here next season. And now you get an opportunity to really add into that. And so I think the fact that it opens up that full slate, it opens up the opportunity for you to say, hey, do we want to go offense here? Do we want to go defense in the first round? Do we want to go Jalen Carter high? Uh, uh, do we want to go Will Anderson Jr. high? Or do we want to package this to trade back? Now, the options are all open. Let me know which get which option you guys like in the comments below i'll be down to talk with you as well but i think here's the thing right like the one thing you do have to be concerned about because i know there's uh, while i'm on the trade back train I, I i am right the team that i see that has probably the best slated picks to help your team out is the detroit lions and then you have to ask yourself the question right of course you think they're gonna take cj stroud but maybe they don't right maybe they're like we'll ride it out with golf we don't believe in stroud enough to say that he's the uh, he, he's the guy that we have to take at the number two pick we're gonna go out there and get jalen carter or we're gonna go out there and get will anderson jr and then you got to deal with that guy trying to kill justin fields for the next 10 to 15 years right like is that the situation that you really want to put yourself in? I, and I, I think that they're they're probably the best team for you to trade back in. If you guys see another one in there, let me know in the comments below. But right, like the trade back scenario is the one I'm in favor of because I do think you have so many holes you need to you need to plug these holes. But it can't just be for two picks in the first round, and we're just gonna give you that, right? Like I need I need more back, bro, because I'm I'm possibly giving you the opportunity to kill my guy for the next ten years, right? Like I, I'm just saying. Um, but I love the fact that the Bears. Ha I mean, literally, you have money, you've got your picks, you've got high picks, you have your full slate of options open to you. You don't have your own second round pick, but I think there's even still some deals in place that could get you back in the high second round, right? With this pick that's possibly on the table, so. For me, there's a lot of excitement around this team, and there's even more excitement. By the way, if you haven't done so, man, hit that like button, subscribe to the page, and make sure you hit that notification bell. We post a ton of content on this channel. We don't want you to miss any of it, man. Here's, here's the thing for me. It's not just the fact that 
right? Like, it, it, because we've seen seasons where the Bears are bad and we're like, just tank for the draft capital, but you had no faith in the guy. You had no track record of the guy going into the draft being well, especially with Ryan Pace when Ryan Pace was here, right? Like, you just knew, you knew he was going to be able to find fifth and sixth rounders for you. You had no clue if he was going to be able to find starters for you in the first round, in the excuse me, in the second round, right? Like you, you had no, th there's nobody here that had confidence that Ryan Pace was going to be able to go out there and do that. Right now, what we're seeing on the field, and I understand rookie year, right? But these guys are being put in a really tough position. They went up yesterday. The Chicago Bears went up yesterday against the best team in the NFC. You went up against the class of your division or conference, I should say. And not only did the Chicago Bears defense not look outmatched, they didn't look like they were devoid of talent for the first time in a long time. And it's because you started to see some of that young talent really be able to come on and, and, and start to make plays. I think that it does also help that the Bears have a quarterback that they can practice against like Justin Fields, who's a very dynamic with his legs and with his arm. And so you're kind of like, ah, I kind of know how to defend this already because we see this in practice almost every week. But I think here's the big thing for me. When I'm looking at this Bears team, uh, when I'm looking at this rookie class, the thing that gives me the confidence is that we're seeing these guys make plays, not just flash plays. We're seeing them make consistent plays. We're seeing them make the minute plays, the small plays, right? Kyler Gord knocking the ball away. Jaquan Brisker coming in for a big tackle. Uh, uh, Jack Sanborn, his instincts to read the defense are actually really good. Now, here's, here's the thing, right? I love his instincts reading the defense. Athletically, is he going to be that guy? That's, I think, the biggest question out there. I think he's a really good athlete, but I don't know if he's going to be one of the tops of the top guys in the NFL, but maybe, right? Like, maybe that's what we'll see. Uh, maybe he'll, he'll develop into that player and, and, and you know, the hard work and, and, and have the – here's the thing. Having the intelligence is, is higher for me, right? Like, I'd rather have the smart guy than the best athlete in the world because – the smart guy I know is going to be able to go out there and make the plays. The smart guy I know is going to be out there and know how to put himself in the best position to make the plays. And I think that that's really the thing, right, that we saw yesterday as well. You didn't see on the defensive end young guys out of position much, right? Not to say – and I think that's the biggest thing. It, it doesn't mean that we had the best talent yesterday. We didn't. Listen, A.J. Brown, 170 yards basically on Jalen Johnson, good back and forth. It doesn't mean that we had the best talent. But what it means yesterday is that we were in some really good positions to make really difficult plays less difficult. And with the amount of young guys that we have, that's not something that you normally see. That's not something that you normally see. And so I'm excited about where Ryan Pohl's rookie class is, right, coming into his first season because I look at Kyler Gordon. What do you have? Two. Kyler Gordon had a, a pick and a fumble recovery yesterday and uh, a couple of big tackles, right? Jaquan Brisker coming through, laying the boom on a couple of guys. Sanborn, as I talked about, right, doing some good things. And here's the other one that, that uh, has kind of fallen off of the radar. Which is great, right? Which is great. And here's the reason why. Like, I, I love – Braxton Jones right now is being rated as the best rookie left tackle in, in, in last year's draft. Right? Hold up. Oh, every day. Every day. Hold up. Boop, 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 boop. Bow. Y'all know. Uh, that just means it's time for me to go to work. Y'all know where I'm getting this content at. Um, but Braxton Jones has been rated as the best rookie left tackle in this draft class. He was taken in the fifth round. He's been taken behind many tackles. Um, and – we haven't heard much about him, but that's great because that means he's doing his job. The guys I know so much about <laughs> usually is because I see them falling on their back. Cody White here, please stand up. Like, you know what I mean? So hopefully, right, like we continue to see that development out of Braxton Jones. I don't know if he's your left tackle of the future while he's being rated as the best left tackle in this class, right? Listen, if you can go out there and find somebody better, you go out there and you find somebody better. I'm not saying there's not better than Braxton Jones on the field right now. Um, but I think that, right, you have at a minimum a really, really solid offensive lineman that's going to be able to play uh, – uh, um, either left tackle or left guard or somewhere in there, right? Like you move them a little bit inside and you, if, if you go out there and find that right guy, but you know, you have that piece solidified on your offensive line and he's played most of the season. I believe he's one of the only rookie tackles to play 
think he's played 90% of the snaps, 93% of the snaps this season or something like that. So, listen, I got a lot of confidence going, looking at Ryan Pace's first draft class and going in. Not to say he didn't miss any, right? But we're talking about, at least to me, right, I think that Sanborn was a hit. I, I, we didn't even, he was undrafted, wasn't he? He, he wasn't even a draft pick. Uh, Sanborn was a hit. Gordon is a hit. Brisker is a hit. Jones is a hit. That's four people. You're start. You're having the makings of a team right there, my boy. <laughs> and four people on two different sides of the ball. That's the part that excites me. I will say, Valus Jones is a miss. Valus Jones is a miss. You you should not have drafted a 25 year old. I don't know what you, what you saw. I I don't. I don't know what you saw. Let him go. Let him go. Let just just let him fade off into the night. It's okay. I know. I know you feel bad. I know you do, Ryan. Look at me. My brother, look at me. Come on. I know you feel bad. Let him go. He's bad. He, he, he's bad. You, you can't be 27 years old, 25 years old, whatever he is, 106, as a rookie, and come out and play this bad. Let him go. All right, let's get back to the video. No, but at the end of the day, right, like I, I, I'm, my confidence is built up in where this team is because of what we're seeing that's currently happening on the field. And my confidence is built up in this team because not only with what's built on the field, but the opportunity that the Bears have as, as far as talent development goes, right? Um, I, I, it's not just the fact that you got to get these guys in here, right? You can get talented players in here all the time. How are you going to develop them? And I think that Matt Eberflus and Luke Getze and a little bit of Allen Williams. Allen Williams be hit or miss with me. I ain't going to lie. Allen Williams, like, 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 right, versus Philly, I love the defensive game plan. Love it. I thought he really put a game, great game plan out there. I've seen some awful game plans from Allen Williams. I don't know what he is. I, I don't know. Um, but, right, to me, uh, as, as, as we're keeping this thing going, right, like, I love the fact that we have a team right now that's out there and, and has the ability to go out there and develop young players. I think that they've done a really good job with that. I think even through their beefs, they've done a really good job with that. Uh, even seeing how Tevin Jenkins has developed at that guard position this year. By the way, prayers up to Tevin, man. Do we ever get an update on that? I don't, I don't know. I know it was a neck injury, but I don't think we ever got a, like, legit this guy is going to be in this guy is going to be out update let me look here real quick um football doctors offer hopeful update on tevin jenkins he suffered an apparent neck injury in the first quarter it did not appear to be severe there's no concern of paralysis or spinal cord injury well that's great um Says it does have a history of lower back injuries, but it shouldn't be a factor. So no, no significant update. Listen, Tevin, shut it down, baby. We got three games left. Get some rest. Get ready for next season. I like Tevin. I think Tevin's a, a, a really good player. I think he's a, he's a piece on your offensive line. Another young piece on your offensive line. Hopefully the injuries don't take their toll on him early on in his career. But I thought he. I think he's played really, really well for the Bears this season. Um, but at the end of the day, here's the, here's what it comes down to, right? You've got players, you've got pieces in place that can develop. You've got players that are being developed. You've got a ton of young pieces that are really standing out. And, and listen, I, not even just your rookie class. Jalen Johnson looked good. Eddie Jackson this year looked really good standing next to Jaquan Brisker. You might have a safety tandem, a really good safety tandem for the next five, six years if you really want that to be there, right? Um, I think the running back position is a little bit interesting. Y'all know my stance on running backs when it comes to paying them. I don't believe in it. But if you don't feel like you have a good offensive line going into next year, uh, David Montgomery helps. So <laughs> you might want to hold him. You might want to might want to throw him out there a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying ugh, I'm not saying pay him 15 mil a year, but you know, you might want to pay him a little bit more than I'm I'm normally used to paying running backs or or just pay him at all. Um, but yeah. Um I, I'm I'm excited, especially with the fact that you have the money going into next year. You have the picks. You have so much opportunity with the players that are already on your team. I think that if Ryan Poles plays his cards right, the Chicago Bears could be in a position for not just a playoff run, but a really deep playoff run next season because of how dynamic of a player Justin Fields is. And if you just give him some weapons, y'all realize he did what he did yesterday. He he broke uh, uh he broke a thousand yards rushing. He 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 
still threw two passing touchdowns with Equinamia St. Brown starting the day as his best receiver and in Simba Walker backing that up right there. Y'all realize that, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, or Webster and Simba Webster. I don't even know Buddy's name. Don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, it, it it's tough out here is what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, man, I want to know how you guys feel, man. How do you feel about this rookie class? Let me know in the comments below. I'll be down there talking with you as well. How do you feel about Ryan Poles and having an ability to draft these guys, man? Let me know in the comments below. As always, man, it's your boy, Pat the Designer. Back at it again to continue watching our Chicago Bears content. Click the links on the screen or check the links in the description below. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bird done. Peace.